Hi and welcome. Today we're together with uh, Wouter de Nair, Chief Technology Officer at IBM. Wouter, you're kind of authority in Belgium and I think outside the borders of Belgium as well on artificial intelligence. Last 30 years, I mean, that's that's my track where I look back on how mm. I got education and how are things are evolving. We see now with the online courses like Udemy and so on, there is more mm. of micro learning or, or uh, attention span is going down. So there, there are things changing in there. So that's hard what you see the mismatch even with my kids. I see the, a very hard mismatch with yeah. how the traditional schooling goes and how they want to uh, consume information and knowledge uh, um, do you see mm -hmm. there uh, an evolution in there or how that could uh, improve our typical uh, traditional learning? Well, it, it may very well have started now eh, with uh, the, the quarantine we are in and everybody's learning online. Also the kids, right? I mean, my daughter is, is at university. She has all the, all the lessons are recorded um, and she can follow them whenever she wants on demand. There is no classroom yeah. anymore. Um, so, so why not? I think that a, a lot of sectors where this was thought to be impossible or unacceptable, I think we have kind of broken the door open now and uh, I, I think we will see changes um, where, where, where you maybe learn the lesson before and then you have kind of contact moments with your professor where you ask questions and group work, which can also be online, why not? Eh? Um, and where you, where you really work together, but the, the first, I would say, Processing of the of the of the basic information of the lesson. Well, why would you have to be in a, in a classroom? It's 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 actually not not necessary. It's maybe not even not even useful. So I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think this will this will change, and we will see a, a clear acceleration now of these things because many people see now they see that it's possible because they're forced. Right? We are creatures of habit, and uh, there was resistance, and I think now. Um, one of some of the resistance is, is gone and people see hey this is actually this is useful this is working so I'm really optimistic about that if you look uh, five years further in the future how you see the developments uh, out there uh, related to artificial intelligence and uh, technology I mean I saw a lot of technology on, on uh, waste recycling as well where IBM is working mm -hmm. upon so I, I feel confident that there well Everybody is still positive. I did recently a survey uh, to my audience as well. And although there, there is a bad situation, people don't have food, people uh, don't have uh, financial security, they're still pretty positive. So for me, the future looks bright. But, but if you say, if you could look into the future, the next five years, what's, what's is, is going to come then? Well, <laughs> predictions are difficult, especially about the future. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm optimistic on the, on the role that AI can play in uh, maybe not solving, but helping us address some of the big problems in society. Um, you know, if you take very concretely this, exa this example now that we have with COVID-19 and the role that AI and, and uh, high performance computing is already playing in trying to find a cure, it is quite, quite amazing. Eh? The, the AI systems, for example, are being used to try to you know, accelerate the discovery of certain molecules that could be turned potentially into drugs, you know, that target certain aspects of this virus. Uh, and to do that, we have AI systems reading all the literature that is available, which obviously nobody can do. Eh? There's an explosion of literature now on, on COVID-19. Nobody can read all that. But if you have a system, an AI that can you know, try to figure out what maybe are commonalities between all these papers, what is, for example, hidden knowledge, right? Hidden knowledge that, that, that can only be understood if you read maybe like 10 of these papers, but and then you have to make the link. But, but what if the AI can make the link for you? That's one uh, example. You know, it, it will not give you the solution, but it will, it will tell you this, is, this could be interesting. Have a, have a closer look, right? Uh, it's also used to, 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 to create uh, virtually new, new molecules where we think that they could have a, an aspect. Again, helping scientists not waste their time. Eh? We know drug development is extremely expensive. Um, so how do you help scientists focus? Um, you know, by, by reading patents, by reading literature, by trying to figure out where the interesting areas are for human exploration. So, so we are really getting into this, this human-machine partnership mode, right? 
where we understand yeah. that, that that together we are stronger. Yeah? Uh, so so there is no fear because because it is really just helping us be more efficient and not not wasting wasting our time. It's like what Kasparov saw when he uh, you know he first he lost to to Deep Blue. He was very uh, disappointed, obviously. But then he saw okay, we're getting into this new era. Uh, where human and machines, in that case in chess, were stronger than the machines uh, by themselves. And now we're seeing that is in other domains. And I'm very hopeful in chemistry, for example, material discovery. Um, it's really quite interesting finding new batteries. Um, IBM, we just uh, announced that we, that we are closer now to a, to a less polluting type of battery, which was also discovered using AI. Um, so so uh, re recycling programs, um, so it's everywhere and really, you know, farming, precision ag agriculture, being more efficient with the soil, with the water, using less pesticides. Um, it's really, really promising, you know, uh, the things we are able to do. And uh, frankly, we need, we can, we can use all the help we can get, right? And I got uh, one final take for you, uh, Wouter. I like to close up with some, some music most of the time. And uh, I'd okay. like to ask, uh, what is your favorite type of music or do you have a favorite band? Because music is, is what connects us all as well, besides of data and AI and neural networks. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. I did not, I did not see that one coming, Eve. Uh, so, but uh, but thank you for the question. Um, I'm a big fan of. Uh, I must say, I'm a big fan of uh, of of music in my own language. I would say um, in Dutch, of course, English as well. Eh? I, you know, I'm a, I'm. A, I majored in, in English literature, <laughs> which is a, quite interesting for my current position. We can get into that at some other points. Um, yeah. But I think that uh, you know, ling music in your own language uh, just uh, you know hits you harder or or, or stronger maybe than in all the, any other language. So, Walter, thanks very much for the insights and in, uh, artificial intelligence, and that it will support us in a very positive and hopeful future. So, thanks uh, again. And uh, see you soon. Thanks, Eve. My pleasure.